The following slides will cover on the third part of this topic too that discuss on the managing the team members. Along with managing time and resources, system analysts must also manage people in the team. Management is accomplished primarily by communicating accurately to team members who have been selected for their competency and compatibility. Goals for project productivity must be set and members of system analysis team must be motivated to achieve them. Assembling a team is a desirable in team management. You may visualize the situation such that the project manager has the opportunity to create a dream team of skilled people to develop a system. Whom should he or she choose? In general, project managers need to look for others who share their values of teamwork guided by the desire to deliver a high quality system on time and on budget. Other desirable team member characteristics include a good work ethic, honesty, competency, a readiness to take on leadership based on expertise, motivation, enthusiasm for the project, and trust of teammates. In general, teams will often have two leaders, not just one. Usually, one person will emerge who leads members to accomplish tasks, and another person will emerge who is concerned with the social relationship among group members. Both are necessary for the team. And again, three critical aspects need to manage efficiently are the involved team members, activities implementation, and their schedule time. Planning for required time that align with the previous project experience will enable the team to set worthwhile productivity goals. Team members can be motivated, at least partially, through participation in goal setting. Setting a challenging but achievable goal and then periodically measuring the performance against the goal seems to work in motivating the people. Goals act almost as magnets in attracting people to achievement. Part of the planning process is to agree on what will be done and at what time. Analysts who are external consultants as well as those who are organization members need to specify what they will eventually deliver and when they will deliver it. A project charter is specification and written document for the project proposal. Project charter normally describes the expected results of the system project, namely the deliverables and the time frame for delivery. A project charter will become a contract between the project manager and his or her analysis team with the client or organizational user that requests for the new system. You may refer to the main textbook to look for the details example of project charter. In managing the project, early discussions among the productive team members and proper feasibility studies are usually the best defenses possible against taking on projects that have a high probability of failure. Your training and experience will improve your ability to judge the worthiness of projects and the motivation that prompt others to request the projects. It is important, however, to note that system projects can and do have serious problems. You can also learn from the wisdom gained by people involved in earlier project failures. One technique known as a fishbone diagram, also called a cause and effect diagram or an Ishikiwa diagram, can be drawn in order to illustrate what can go wrong in a project. As summary for this topic 2, project planning process, we have covered all the five subtopics. We start with project initiation to identify the issues that lead to the problems 
and what are the opportunities to improve the current or SE system. Before we start or begin the project, the feasibility studies in terms of operational, technical and economical were discussed. CBA cost benefit analysis using PVA present value analysis technique is extensively discussed to estimate the economical element for the feasibility study. The third subtopic is related to the project planning and control. Work breakdown structure or WBS technique is explained on how to break down the SDLC phases to the tasks or activities, step and further smaller units. Three important techniques such as scan chart, bird diagram and CPM are explained in details in project scheduling subtopic. The last subtopic explains further how to manage the team members and discuss the project charter purposes. Next topic 3 will present the second phase in STLC which is on the requirements gathering.